Yes, <coughs> yes, I think we can, we can find uh, the innovations in our tradition. Um, because uh, we had some interesting practices in the past that can be revisited, can be, I mean, revalutated. Uh, for example, we didn't talk about the yield in the vineyard. I mean, we have roughly the similar yield per hectare versus the past. It's quite similar, but it's obtained in a different way because we have uh, uh, a very different planting density. For example, in Tuscany until the 60s, we had uh, uh, 3,000 plants per hectare, which is the normal. The normal. Now we have uh, 5,000, 6,000 plants per hectare. And uh, we say that there is an inverse correlation between quality and quantity. That's true. But it's not the quantity per hectare. It's the quantity per vine. It's the quantity per plant. The quantity per hectare doesn't match any, anything with the quality. It's the quantity per vine. So changing the quantity per vine, I remember when I was a, a boy, we had uh, vines with uh, six, seven, eight kilos of grapes per plant. Now we have one, 1.5, maybe two kilos per plant, no more. So there is the, this correlation. Of course, we anticipate maturation. If I have less, uh, but less grape load, anticipate maturation, and I have a, a different kind of maturation, because we are searching for a different wines. In the 60s and in the 70s, nobody was talking about anthocyanins and polyphenols. The only quality was sugar. The only parameters for quality was sugar at that time. Now we are talking about something different because there is a more uh, I mean, knowledge about wine, about testing wine. In the, in the 60s and in the 70s, if you went to a restaurant, there were two types, two kinds of wine, red and white. This was the only difference. Now we have a, a, a list which is almost a, a book of wines. So we can choose different wines, we can appreciate different flavors, different anthocyanins contents, different uh, uh, polyphenols, <laughs> different structure. We are talking about all these parameters that we didn't take into account at that time. So we had uh, a production that was facing the market at that time. Now we have a different market different uh, characteristic of the wine, but we are facing with these problems. Because we have an increase in, uh, in sugars, uh, anticipation of maturation, but now we have Merlot. At the time, we didn't have in Tuscany Merlot. Merlot, which maturation is the end of August, the beginning of September. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have to, I don't want to say, I repeat, I don't want to say that doesn't exist in climate change. There are data, there sure, are numbers. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we but, can, but we cannot blame all the climate change for this changing in our products. We have combined effects. Yes, yeah. we have a combined yeah. effect. Yeah. Uh, well, um, because it's, in terms of a wine grower in perspective, they are very, very much concerned about how to do, what we can do for or the, towards the climate change. So we are talking about, like uh, Mati told about, for instance, we can consider adaptation measures. So, for instance, uh, Claudio Casardo, in your model, are you thinking, uh, are you thinking in your model, Yvonne, uh, for instance, in the future probably, to uh, introduce some adaptation measures in your models? Is away. Sorry. I think from, from a general perspective, yes, general perspective. Can yes, can answer. Well, uh, I think that, uh, uh, I think that mo modeling is a way to know, is a way to simulate, is a way to quantify something that uh, we don't, we can't measure, or it's difficult to understand uh, and in uh, uh, measuring. So. If we can simulate the uh, behavior of, uh, uh, of, a, of a, a vine or a pathogen or an organism, we can uh, understand uh, what are the mechanisms uh, 
and the relationships between all the parts. So I think that if we use crop models to simulate the long-term variations, but also short-term variations, we can give some knowledge and some instruments, some tools to give an interpretation of what the machine is doing in this uh, way, in this moment. Because uh, this model, this kind of models, I think that uh, can give uh, a contribution in, uh, to simulate the long term, and so program, plans, uh, and so on, but uh, especially in the short term, in short term uh, managing. Because uh, in long term, we have uh, uh, long, long term time, we can uh, uh, simulate uh, a trend. We, we can simulate uh, a, a trend of uh, what will be in uh, uh, the next uh, 30 years. And uh, this is a useful tool. But uh, I think that uh, these tools, uh, if we integrate all the components of the models, uh, so phytopathological models, uh, physiological models, uh, we can give a, a tool, an instrument to interpret in this moment what uh, the vine is, uh, is doing. Uh, I want to point out only uh, an aspect that uh, I haven't uh, uh, told before. That are the physiopathic uh, effects. Uh, not only physiological, but physiopathic, because uh, there is an increase of uh, uh, physiopathic uh, um, ph phenomena. Uh, because uh, in, uh, during the years we can uh, uh, understand that there is an increase of temperature, a decrease of precipitation, okay. But uh, during the growing period we have uh, Lots of variation, uh, heat waves, uh, heat stress, uh, water stress, uh, what is of uh, opposite signs. So we have uh, great periods of uh, uh, rainfall, great period, long periods of uh, water stress. We have uh, stress of uh, um, um, cold and uh, uh, frosts or uh, other uh, physiopathic. And this uh, uh, phenomena uh, influence the, uh, the growing period, the growing uh, behavior of this year. And this is the difficult uh, to interpret, uh, to give an interpretation of uh, what is doing in this way the, uh, the, the, the machine, the, the photosynthetic machine. This is, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, opened the doors uh, to physiopathic behavior to periods of weakness of the plants. If the plant is weak, it is more um, uh, the, the action of uh, uh, resistance to production, like pathogens or insects, become more, uh, more uh, um, dangerous, become stronger. And uh, I think that the models, all the models, if integrated, could give uh, this uh, uh, interpretation more on the short term, on the, uh, the, during the, the period of, of growing, uh, more than for the long period. This, I think, uh, should be uh, the, the, the great uh, uh, utility of these uh, models. Uh, crop growth, uh, phytopathologic, uh, and also physiopathic uh, in, in order to understand how to do if the horizon stops because there is a stress or if there is a, a, a heat stress and so the photosynthesis stops and so we need I think these tools to understand to interpret what is doing how is uh, in, in this moment, uh, how, how is uh, uh, growing or not growing the wine? And uh, this is the, the real utility, I think, of this model, if well integrated altogether with uh, parts of uh, pro um, productivity and also simulation of uh, the actions of the resistance factors that limit the, 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 the growing uh, 
behavior of the, of the vine. I think that this should be... Uh, and thank you, Fe Federico. Thank you. If I can add some... some yeah, some yeah. So, Mark. Yeah, uh, thank so you. About uh, the same question. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, actually, the model is... Uh, okay, it's... Uh, uh, maybe it's... Uh, part of the reality and not represent whatever happens in, in the vineyard, but can give the feeling of the impact of management practice. Uh, for instance, as the print system, uh, the shape you can give the, uh, 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 the grapes you grow, uh, because of course the, the, the use of water depends on, on basically on how many leaves have, have the grape of the grapes, the grape wine. Uh, and therefore, uh, using uh, uh, the modules within the, 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 the model, you can modify the shape of the grape wine. And so to test the effectiveness of different pruning system or shape of the plants or whatever in uh, the consume of water. As, uh, as uh, 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 Mati, uh, Professor Mati, uh, already shown, there is a, a different use of water depending on how you grow the grape wine. I think the model, if uh, a, a well structure, uh, can give this feeling, uh, you can test uh, which is the best uh, pruning system or whatever to reduce the amount of water for, for growing the grapes. This could be a, a practical application of, of, of a model just to play with the future climate. Maybe Antonello, do you want to say something about, for instance, the implication, uh, the impl application of uh, adaptation measures in the on, on, uh, on the models? Because, as I said, when, I, when I'm talking to a wine grower, they are also asking me, okay, we, we know that uh, climate change is, is taking place because if they are aware of that, they're very concerned and they want answers. Because, right. And always <laughs> they, they seem a little bit disappointed when they go to, a, so, to our let's say, scientific talks, because they, want, they, they are expecting more ans direct answers, and okay. sometimes the field is disappointed. Uh, it's, yeah. it's clear that uh, the dimensions um, are different between uh, the research and uh, the final user, no? The farmer needs uh, some answer to some uh, problems in the vineyards, and uh, sometimes we look uh, to other things, no? For this reason, we start to make this meeting also. About modeling, uh, um, it's important to collect data to make an experiment uh, that uh, are useful to identify the best parameters to apply the modeling and to evaluate the robustness of these models in terms of helping uh, the, the farmers. Um, and um, obviously, uh, where we fall, uh, when we start to use models uh, with some uh, big uncertainty and we go to talk with the people that work in vineyards because uh, we create this, um, uh, this stack between uh, distance between the research and farmers because they don't understand what we do but also our results are, to, are not robust and then create a mistake with, with them. And uh, just for example, about the last talk, you know, I hear uh, the question about uh, we have to improve the organic matter in soil. Uh, this is obviously uh, one of the most important uh, uh, aim in the future of to mitigate climate change. It is important for erosion, etc. But uh, some people uh, confuse or no, is not uh, able to completely manage, manage the, um, the question about how this organic matter improves the soil hydraulic properties for the water stress. In my, in, uh, my research and um, currently uh, I work on this topic and uh, it is, it's clear that uh, the increase organic matter in the first layer of soil, in the top soil, obviously increase the retention uh, at saturation, yes, the porosity, but the curve move, uh, move in, in 
also not only the field capacity but also the built-in point. And then the available water content don't change in enough. And also if you look at the real water availability, the, the increase for organic matter to value also 5% has not a very important effect on uh, water availability for the plants. It seems strange, but this is due to the fact that uh, the effect of organic matter is uh, along the retention curve and not only on the field capacity. Then uh, create this uh, mistake that people think that uh, we can increase the capacity of our soil to, to retain and manage the water, but it's not uh, so uh, general. Probably there are some cases in which uh, it's less evident these things. About modeling, uh, I would conclude that, conclude that uh, I like the idea that uh, we have to use different kind of approach together, uh, try to cope the different uh, uh, weakness point of each approach. Then the idea to use a model in sequence, empirical, qualitative and quantitative is just to put all together and try to arrive to results with uh, low uncertainty or deciding uh, in which we want to remain uncertainty in our uh, approach. And uh, that's all. Okay. Giovanni, do you want, you want to say something about this? Okay. Sorry, uh, like, just to add a brief consideration on modeling, and I think that uh, models can represent um, a very cost-effective solution to cope with the, with the problem because they allow exploring um, uh, boundary and unexplored conditions. And in the real world, it's very difficult to test um, all the possible combination of factors involved with the, with the problem. And we saw yesterday that um, the impact of climate change is very um, variable in space. And so we have to to define some site-specific solutions and um, um, it, it, um, integrated solutions and uh, the sharing of data and technology is, uh, is, the, um, is the best solution we can, we can try to, to, take, to take. And so just uh, this, I would like just to have this consideration. Like to say other in a consideration about uh, Giovanni uh, talk. Obviously, the models are important because uh, are able to capture the non-linearity between the processes involved in the system. No, and we use uh, the model for this. But I would like to avoid the idea that we can uh, uh, use the models without to spend uh, money, and then the costs are present in the model application because we need the real data measured to calibrate the model, because when we start to, to work with the model with different scenarios, we can arrive really at uh, conclusions that are unrealistic, because uh, in the models there are a lot of parts that are based on empirical approach. And uh, I agree with him about uh, we cannot, can only use the model to, to analyze different scenarios, but we need uh, data measured to apply the model, calibrate the model, and after to extrapolate in uh, other scenarios what uh, we are to expect also in terms of climate change. Because uh, I say this because uh, in different uh, Congress, uh, and sometimes people seem that uh, discuss uh, as uh, we have already all the information measured to apply modeling and to make an evaluation of impacts. This is not completely true in all, uh, in all cases. Also, when we want to work at uh, this big scale, like Europe, like Italy, I don't know if you are familiar with the European database of soils. We have a Lucas that is uh, for the first 20 centimeters, the information that is specialized. Uh, and this is not enough to apply really a modeling that uh, describes the soil, the soil uh, processes. And if you look to other database, we have uh, not so much soil to describe the Europe variability of soils. Like, I don't know, for, I think that is uh, less than uh, 500 soils described in terms of uh, soil horizon and properties, it is not enough. The same problem we have in Italy and also, I think also in Portugal and Spain, because it's uh, an information that has really a high cost. And this is the problem, because you have to uh, field campaign and uh, 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 analysis and uh, 
this is the fact that we have to go slowly in the <laughs> when we use modeling and uh, try to do something. And we are talking about a perennial crop, so it takes a lot, lot of time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, but as he said, it's, the, the model is the only solution to say something because if you want to start to use another uh, cultivars in a place, you have to wait three years. After three years, long, we have not so much time to, to decide and wait uh, different uh, and test different approaches. No? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> one of the debates we could discuss as well is that well, usually the projects are very short in time, short times, that's yeah. three years. And three years for, for grapevines, as I said, a perennial crop is nothing. I mean, and uh, in these terms, in climate change, three years is zero, because it's, lo it's a long time study. Well, uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, the audience is invited to put questions. Please be, be free if you want to put some questions. You're very, you're very welcome. Um, otherwise, I'll try to no, no, put a question to, Lin to Linda. Well, um, you mentioned that uh, in your, I think it's your, your PhD thesis, you, were, you study by st stimulants, right? Um, so you think it's, um, uh, for the future, it's a good, comp uh, let's say, it's compost of good product that can be used in the future commercially, and it, it must, can be used uh, commercially uh, at, at long uh, scale, let's say. Yes. Scale for in, in, in the grapevines. Yes. I think that uh, today we have, al we saw a lot of um, methodologies to assess the climate change impacts, but we need to focus our uh, energy and spend our time on something really applicable on a large scale, uh, useful for, uh, for farmers. So I think that biostimulant uh, or uh, compost or um, uh, that we that we have some uh, tools um, that we can um, apply in large scale for farmers and biostimulants uh, is an example um, is very the um, the distribution is very quick uh, with the other uh, treatments, there is the, the, mm, there is the possibility to mix the biostimulants with other treatments, and uh, also is um, I, I think um, a good um, uh, is quite it is it, not so expensive for uh, for a farm because uh, uh, the biostimulant is applied a very very low uh, doses, so I think it's um, a, a really um, important tool for uh, for us today in viticulture. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, Linda. Well, um, um, what I think one of the questions um, when talking about climate change and modeling, I suppose, it's always all the time the the problem of scale in terms of uh, uh, maybe. Uh, Ask you, Marco. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about this. For instance, uh, when we talk about in the models, climate models, usually we're dealing with large scale. Uh, and for instance, in my case, even as a researcher, usually I, w I work at a field scale, and, uh, and the wine growers as well are very concerned at the field scale, and uh, so sometimes there's a big problems. This kind of downscaling. Yeah. What can you say? That? I even, even one thing I'd like to ask you. Other thing is, um, for instance, some of the, of the samples can be quite destructive. For instance, uh, I think it was uh, Professor Mati that mentioned, uh, or Antonello, for instance, for evaluating the berry weight over the season, you have to destruct, I mean, you have to collect yeah. Yeah. Uh, berries from different vines. I mean, that we're not collecting exactly from the same vine. So this can uh, give some problems when you are calibrating probably the model because you are using, I mean, I'm just yeah, wondering. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, actually a very complicated point for the 
for collecting data for model calibration. We had not a direct experience, but a paper describing how if we get uh, uh, a higher variability in the sample for calibrating the model, we can get different results in the output if we get, uh, I don't know, the median of the, or the average of the sample we get. So the variability also in the calibration process uh, plays a large role in the uncertainty of the results. And uh, uh, further, uh, we, we must upscale the result from the local scale to the, to the global scale. And this is an additional issue. Uh, because, of course, uh, the, 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 each variety has a different sensibility, to, for instance, to water stress. There is, a, in this case, a, a, a large variability. How to take into account this variability is different, it's very difficult to apply a model over a large scale, considering uh, uh, all the same genetic parameters uh, all over Europe. Uh, that's why it, 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 actually it, uh, it's something that has been done so far. Take into account a generic uh, uh, variety that is valid for all over Europe. And this is, of course, a, it's, it's, a, it's an issue you want to, to address the specific uh, adaptation at the local scale. Uh, uh, that's why, in many cases, uh, when you look at these maps uh, showing, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, this uh, a large yield gap in the southern Europe uh, and an increase in northern, we not must look uh, at the value, but this uh, we must look at the trend. It doesn't mean that there is there is not it's not likely that the vinyl will be destroyed in southern uh, uh, Europe and will uh, expand to northern. We, but we must look at the, the, the general shift, at the general trend. And uh, that's what I can say about the uh, the large scale impact on, on grape wine. The local scale, of course, depends on with the, also within the farm, there is a variability in the soil and the behavior of the, of the variety in, uh, in, uh, in the face of climate and the soil. So this is, uh, uh, this is an additional issue, but it's of course a question of scale mainly. Thank you, Mike. Uh, well, I'll maybe I'll ask you to show in Marty your, your opinion about that as well, and the <coughs> final message to the audience. Yeah. The first thing I would like to say is that uh, we have to understand that the grapevine is not there to produce wine. We are making a big violence on the grapes, on the grapevines, because uh, the, the aim of the grapevine is first to grow, second to produce seeds. We produce wine. But the grapevine doesn't even know that we are producing wine with the grapes. So if if, when I heard that we have to, uh, to follow the natural uh, behavior of the plant, that's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. We have to make a different way to grow in the grapevine. Because we cut, uh, we cut the, the shoots. The, I mean, in, in winter, a, a grapevine has uh, 100 buds. We remove 90 of them and we leave just 10. We cut the shoots in summer. We, we made all, all, the, all the possible violence. We, we, we reduce the, class, the number of clusters because we want to increase the quality. So it, it's, a, it's a completely uh, artificial what we are doing in the vineyards. Uh, please allow me to use this term artificial. It's a, that means that we are working in a natural world, of course, but we are making something artificial, completely different from the, what the plant want. So uh, we have to understand that we have to think with our head, not with the head of the, of the grapevine, because otherwise we, we will go in, in, a, in a wrong direction. And the model is very useful for that, because one of the important tools of the model is that they can open the mind, they can open our mind, because it's very easy to stay 
in front of a computer and uh, what happens if I change the leaf area? I put the leaf area in the model and I see what is, what is happening. Of course, we have to validate that. We have to calibrate and validate uh, the, the, I mean the, the model after that. But what can happen if I increase the number of clusters? We are going to publish a, a paper on, on the model. We use the, a, a very simple model, not as complicated as yours, but it's a Stella model. I, I don't know if you know it. It's quite simple, but it's very interesting because by changing few parameters, we have a big change in the results. So it's a, it's a very complicated equilibrium, a very complicated balance between all the factors involved in the production. And it's uh, uh, very easy to change uh, few parameters, few aspects, and to have a very different results. It's a, a stimulant word, actually, because uh, it's very, I mean, very stimulant to, to work in this, uh, in this topic. But uh, if you have the occasion to use uh, the model, please try, because it, it's an open mind. It's, uh, you, you can see something you didn't even think before. Well, uh, I'd like to ask you, Antonello, Giovanni, uh, let's say the last message to the audience, even concerning probably this problem of reality and calibration of these population of models. Okay. If you uh, want to. First of all, I think that we have to pray <laughs> to, to find the right way to face the climate change. No, uh, surely uh, there, is, uh, there are big opportunities from the management of it. This is uh, clear to all people that work in agriculture. Then uh, we are, have to be also optimistic that in some way uh, the current Maya uh, region will found in some way the, 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 the um, what they have to do in order to maintain their status in this moment. But uh, obviously we have to see over and um, forward to, to the future. And for this we need uh, the modeling application. And we have to work to, together and uh, most training uh, to apply this model and validate it also at the local scale before to start to work at a big scale. And surely in the next uh, years, uh, there will be opportunities to apply a more uh, process-based model because the, the databases uh, at the European level will change. And then uh, surely the, the results that now we obtain and uh, are, that are able to give us information about the phenomena that uh, we will see in the future uh, will be improved and something surely will, will change in uh, our conclusion that, that now we, we have. And uh, the, the message is this, that we have to work all together with the farmer uh, needs and uh, trying also to understand that uh, there is an economical dimension that uh, our the researcher uh, don't take into account, no? the economical dimension for which the farmer are really interested to disease control because they reduce the cost and, and then improve the incomes. And uh, for this, we have to find the, 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 the point of contact with them, so, essentially. Um, I just had two things. And the first is that when uh, working large scale uh, with models, um, it's necessary to abstract, abstract the concept from uh, variety to crops because it's not possible to have data to characterize a single variety and um, carried out simulation over uh, the Europe. But of course, um, we can um, derive some um, basic information to uh, uh, help the stakeholders. And uh, um, maybe the use of advanced uh, methodologies such as uh, um, sensitivity analysis can um, strongly reduce the number of parameters uh, to which uh, we have to focus on. And so uh, I think that uh, mm, the effort in the field, campaign, in field campaigns will be reduced if the, the number of parameters uh, will be less. And uh, also, of course, uh, as said 
Antonello before, we need uh, some data collected in, under uh, um, control um, uh, conditions because uh, uh, if we, uh, also if we have a lot of data representing the current situation, uh, we need to, to catch some uh, um, I would say data which are representative of uh, um, either heat stress or uh, drought stress. And so we need to invest some resources to, to collect this data. Uh, well, I just uh, have a question to, to give you a word as well to Federico, but uh, I just want to say that we have to be optimistic because we, we saw yesterday and today as well some uh, graphs and figures that can be quite dramatic for southern, southern Europe, southern Italy, Spain, France, uh, but I'm sure that uh, hopefully the grapevines will survive and viticulture will be a main crop in southern Europe and uh, it will be a challenge for us, but uh, let's keep optimistic. Uh, uh, in, the, in this case, i uh, ask you, Federico, in terms of the pests and diseases, uh, can we be optimistic as well, well in terms of climate change? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, in pest disease, uh, yes, it's, a, um, it's an important uh, uh, operative topic. Uh, no? So, uh, climate change and pest disease uh, are uh, related, uh, but uh, I would like to uh, add uh, only one aspect, uh, that is the regional point of view. Uh, we have a re regional service. Uh, uh, I don't know if I, if I answer to your question, but uh, I, <laughs> I want only to, to, to add this, uh, this aspect. Uh, it's important to improve the models, uh, to calibrate the models, uh, uh, to make research uh, for models uh, applied for climate change, uh, not climate change, or, or uh, uh, growing uh, management, and so on. It's important uh, to, it, it's not so important if the model is not so precise. <laughs> it's important to make them used and make them used uh, wants to say that we have uh, to customize uh, the models, uh, we have uh, to, uh, to make them easy to use. And uh, this is uh, what uh, CREA Bologna is trying to do uh, with Bioma, with AgriDigit. Uh, and uh, in Italy we have uh, a, a coordination table for agrometeorologies activities that uh, whose aim is also to uh, not to uh, um, improve models but but to make the model used by end users by stakeholders regional stakeholders farmers local stakeholders so we have to uh, use these phytopathological models uh, uh, not only to calibrate uh, them uh, for, yes, uh, surely, for only for calibrating, also for calibrating them in the different areas uh, and uh, applying them for simulation, climate change, and so on. But we have uh, to uh, make an inf informatic effort and uh, a dissemination effort uh, to, uh, to, to, to know that uh, these models exist, that uh, they uh, perform uh, in a correct way, uh, but uh, we have to, uh, if, also if they are not so precise, it's not important for a farmer. <laughs> we can uh, try to, uh, to establish the perfect parameter for a variety, for another variety, it's not so important. It's important to give an instrument uh, useful that can be used. 
uh, then it, it could be more precise, less precise, uh, it's not so important. We have the, the, the mistakes uh, of uh, uh, vine management uh, are not uh, in the use of uh, interpretation of model, are in the distribution of a product, uh, are in the moment, the right moment, uh, the, because there is a variability in the vineyards, in the, uh, in, in the areas, uh, and so on, that uh, we cannot uh, uh, I don't know how I can say, uh, we cannot uh, have all the knowledge of all the territories, but we have a model and we have to interpret this. We have to apply and make it apply. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, in, in, in Italy, I don't know, also in other countries perhaps, uh, in Germany uh, there is a, a service, a national service for models, uh, phytopathological models. Uh, in France uh, perhaps uh, also there are services uh, for this. In Italy, no. We have uh, several models, uh, lots of models. Uh, there is also confusion of uh, uh, too many models. <laughs> And this is important uh, for us uh, to make an informatic uh, effort, uh, a dissemination effort uh, to, uh, to, to, to use, uh, to make uh, this model uh, use for all the uh, application uh, we, we need, long period, short, uh, short term and so on. This is my suggestion and this is the effort, uh, this is a, a need for a regional service, uh, something of uh, national that can be used by everybody. Thank you very much, Federico. Just so we are finishing, I have to say that the climate change, as you can see, is, uh, is a challenge for when viticulturists and winemakers. It's a challenge, it can face several uh, hazards, but uh, we have to think as well that we can have a uh, lot of opportunities for the future and the present as well. So we have to think always in a balance between positive and negative aspects, not always the negative ones. Thank you very much. <laughs>